Hello and thanks for watching Best Maths Tutors. I'm covering the Edexcel GCSC Maths paper from 2019 and this is the Foundation Tier Paper 2. So we're going to cover all the questions on this paper. So if you'd like to see more of these, then uh, please hit the subscribe button. So question one is talking about writing this uh, decimal, 0.75, as a fraction. So when we're doing that, all we need to do is and ignore the bit in front of the decimal point, so ignore the zero, and just write the 75 over, and then it's a one, and as many zeros as we have places after the decimal point. So we can see here, we've got two numbers after the decimal point, so I'm gonna write a one and two zeros. So that's the fraction, um, the 0.75 converted into a fraction there, but then, we'd want to try and simplify the fraction by cancelling it down. So to do that, what we would do is look for numbers which will divide into the top and bottom of this fraction. And um, we might be able to see that we can divide the top by 25 and the bottom by 25. If we were to do that, divide the top by 25, 25 goes into 75 three times. And we can also divide the bottom by 25. So we're just simplifying this fraction. And if we divide 100 by 25, 25 goes into 104 times. So the 0 0.75 as a fraction is 3 quarters. And if we're looking at question 2 now, we've got to write these numbers in order of size, starting with the smallest. So I think the easiest way to look at this is think of a number line and so there we go, if we put zero in the middle and try and um, then we go minus one, minus two, minus three. I'm just making this long enough so I can fit all the numbers on here. And going in the going to the right of the zero, I've got positive numbers, one, two, three, four. And now we've done that, we can see starting from the left, that's actually the smallest number. So that would be the minus three. So we can see the minus three would go here. Then the next one going from left to right is the minus one. So that would go there. So that's our next one. So minus one. Then we can see we've got zero going from left to right. So that would be there. So the next number is zero. Then the next one going again from left to right is the two. So we've got two next. And then we've got the four. So that's that one done. Um, so then if we're writing down question three, we've got to write down some factors of 15. And what a factor is, is a number which divides into another number. So I'll just write that down. So a factor is a number which divides into another number. So we're just looking for numbers which will divide into 15 with no remainder. And we can see that um, three will go into 15 because um, if we wrote out the three times table, we would have three, six, nine, 12, 15. So three is one of the factors of 15. If we wrote down another factor of 15, we could write down five as well. Because five goes into fifteen, so anything, anything that will divide into the number we're looking for, without any remainder, is um, a factor. So, looking at question four now, so we've got uh, change one hundred and one thousand seven hundred and fifty-six grams into kilograms, and to do this, what we need to know is that one thousand grams is equal to one kilogram. So if we want to change from grams um, uh, to kilograms, if you want us to go in that direction, then what we'd actually have to do is we'd have to divide by 1,000 because um, a kilogram is a 1,000 times what a gram is. 
So if we're changing a number that's written in grams to kilograms, we have to divide it by a thousand. And if it was going in the other direction, we want to change the unit from kilograms to grams, we'd actually have to times by 1,000. And we can see that because one kilogram, measured in kilograms, is one kilogram. But to get it in grams, we've got to actually times the one by 1,000 to get 1,000 kilograms, uh, 1,000 grams. If I divide 1,756 by 1,000, it will give me the answer in kilograms. So I've got to do that, divide by 1,000. And to do that, all I need to do is move the decimal point three places to the left, and that's because there's three zeros there. So if you're dividing by 10, I'd move the decimal point one place to the left. It's currently there. If I'm dividing by 100, I'll move it two places to the left. Divide by 1,000, move it one, two, three places to the left. And so what I would get is 1.756 kilograms. Uh, the next one, we've got to write the number 2 million in figures. So um, what that would be is actually, if I write um, that, give the answer and then I'll explain it. So that's 2 million in figures. And to understand that, we've got to un got to realise what the position in the number represents. So that's the units or the ones. So units is this one. Tens column hundreds. It's not very clear, I suppose, but that's the hundreds. This is the thousands. Thousands column. This is the Ten thousands column. This is going to be the hundred thousands column. And so this one is the millions. So that's why we've put that there. We've put the two in the millions column. Um, so moving on, we've got question six. We've got a um, question where we've got Dave is going into a cafe, buying two cups of coffee and a piece of cake. And we're given the price of coffee and we're given the price of cake. And we're told that he pays with a £10 note. And he's thinking that he's going to get more than £1.50 in change. So we've got to find out whether he's right or not. Um, and since this is a calculator paper, we're going to use a calculator for this. We could. Um, do this easily on a non-calculator paper as well, but obviously if you're on the calculator paper, then that's what you want to use. So we're going to um, two lots of 275. So the total cost, let's work that out first. The cost is going to equal two times 275 for the coffee. And also we're going to then add on £2.90. So let's work out what all that works out to be. Um, so I'm going to go 2 times £2.75. So let's get what that is. It gives it as a strange number there as a fraction. If we want it to go into um, a decimal, what we would do is we press the SD button and that gives us 5.5, which would be £5.50. Um, I'm now going to add on. £2.90 onto that, so plus 2.90. And again, it gives it as we have to be careful, it gives it as, as a fraction 4205, but we don't want it like that, we want it as a decimal. So we're going to just press the SD button, and we've got 8.4, which is £8.40. It's just the calculator doesn't know. That we're dealing in money, so we've got to, it's cut it off, but actually it's eight pound forty that. So eight pound forty. And so if we want to get the change, change is going to be the uh, the ten pound that we've got there minus the cost. So it's going to be equal to ten pound minus eight pound. 40. And I'm going to do this on the calculator. So um, 
10 minus 8.40. And again, we've got it like that, but because the calculator doesn't know it's money we're talking about. Press the SD button, and we've got 1.6, which is £1.60. And we might think we've finished, but actually, we have to be very careful. What we've got to do is we've got to actually answer the bit that says, is Dave correct? Um, so we usually might want to give a reason as well, but we'd say, yes, Dave is correct. He is correct because um, he got £1.60 in change. In change, so he got he got more than one pound fifty. Because that's what was being asked. He got more than one pound fifty. And if we really want to explain it, we might want to say he got one pound sixteen change, which is more than one pound fifty. Um, one fifty. So, um, so moving on, I'm going to. Uh, do questions seven and eight, and then I'll break this down into different videos. So um, we get these ones done now. Then. So question seven, it's saying there are Y boats on a lake, and that means Y represents a number. So Y is a number of boats. Okay, so a number, I didn't mean to write it like that, a number of boats. So, um, and there's seven people in each boat. So we've got to work out, uh, write an expression for uh, the total number of people in the boats in terms of Y. So we can see that if we've got Y boats and seven people in each boat, we could say we've got seven times Y. So if we had two boats, we'd have seven times two, which would mean we'd have 14 people. But it's just saying we don't know what how many boats we've got yet, so we're using a letter to represent it. And we can say in algebra what we what we do is we don't really write the times between uh, the numbers and the letters, so we just call that seven y. And so that would be it for question seven. Um, simplifying this expression here, a times b times seven, would just mean what I've done above there, really, it's saying, well, when we've got algebra, we don't bother writing times between um, letters um, because we don't, it's really because we don't want to be confused by it being an X because we might be using X in our expressions. So times looks a bit like X, so we don't want to have it in there. So we could say um, it's, it's normal to write the number first, that would just be 7AB. And that means seven times a times b. That's, that means exactly the same as this one, um, but we usually put the number first as well. And then if we've got this one now, um, so y times y times y is uh, can be simplified. We could write that as y y y, but in fact, when we're multiplying them by itself, it means we can write a power here, and the power in this case is three because we're multiplying it by itself one, two, three times. So that's why the power is three. Um, so moving on to this one, which is C. Um, when we've got letters which are separated by multiplication on the top and bottom of a fraction, we can actually cancel them. So we can see that uh, we've got an E on the top there, and that cancels with an E on the bottom. And we, as long as we pair them off, we're all right. So we can cancel that E with that E. We've now run out of E's on the bottom, so that E on the top is going to stay there. So if we look at the F's now, we've got an F there, and I can cancel it with that F. And so what we're left with is just E over F, and that, that's it. So, and I think that was the last one of that question, yes. So, I hope that's been helpful to you, and if it has, obviously we'd love it if you'd think about subscribing to our channel to see more of our videos, 
And also, if you would like our video, that would be fantastic. Um, thanks for watching.